Hey, I think we're live. Hello, Hello. Linda. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Actually, I probably should say good afternoon. It's 12 o'clock. It is. For us, it is. For the rest of the country, it's still the morning, I guess. It's still the morning. Yes, for sure. For sure. Hey, guys. So to my divorcing, gracefully thriving community, we have an amazing women, woman, <laughs> right? Maybe me included, women. <laughs> We have an amazing woman who's joining us, and Linda is, I guess I'll let you go ahead and introduce yourself, um, but for those of you who are just joining the Divorcing Gracefully and Beyond community, or those of you who are um, new to this group, so I am Donna Rudowitz. I am an LCSW, I'm a psychotherapist and an expert relationship coach, and I am the best in the world at helping amazing brilliant women <laughs> reclaim their brilliance and find love that lasts. Wow. I'm really happy to be talking to you. <laughs> yeah. So Linda, how about yourself? What are you the best in the world at? Oh, okay. Awesome. I am the best in the world at helping um, women recover their health, chronic health conditions. So I am a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner and I um, help women with autoimmune conditions, fatigue, chronic health, really get those symptoms under control, get them into remission and fall in love with, in, with their life again. That's mm. what I do. So we're kind of in the same area, just a little different where you're more working at the internal and, and I guess the mindset as well, of course. And I'm looking at the healing of the soul fracture and then both of us taking our, our tribes to the next level of life. Yeah, yep. yeah. I would agree with that for sure. And there's, there's probably components, there's probably physical things, components that you do. There's definitely emotional and mental things that I do, but it's going to be a great conversation today, Donna, because I feel like this conversation that we're about to have relates to everybody, no matter where Absolutely. they are, from yeah. your tribe, my tribe, and anybody else, really. So, um, But we don't think about it. At least I didn't used to think about it until I started to train myself differently. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, I think it's important to know that even even in our positions, what we do as coaches and as mentors helping our clients get to their transformations, that our learning as a coach never, never stops. And right. one of the discussions in our coaching community that we belong to together, right, is, is, the, is this, I, this thing of talking about culture and talking about self-culture. And I think that's when our discussion sort of was like, wow, maybe this is something that we could talk to with our tribes and our groups because it's so important. Because I believe, and tell me what you think, I believe it's one of those things that we probably don't pay a lot of attention to. Absolutely agree. That's what I said before. I didn't really realize that this is what I and what human beings do automatically. But if you don't know that you're doing it, then you may right. not be doing it the most effectively. You may not be doing what you really want to do. You're just doing it by default, not even realizing. At least that's what I realized I was doing, you know, and when all of this information became. So um, good morning, Bonnie. Hi. Oh, hi, Tina. Oh, people are popping on. Nice. Yeah. So, um, so this idea of creating a culture for self and or you could say your identity. Right. I, I, I don't know about, you know, what you do, but what, with I, what I do, if you have an identity of a sick person, like I'm sick, it's very difficult and I would say impossible to truly heal. You yes. can do all of the things that we know to do. You can change your food. You can get the right supplements. You can, you know, everything. We can get to the root cause. We can do testing. But if you still have a fear that I'm sick, we're only going to get so far. And that's the self-culture or identity that you have created. So how does that speak to you and, and the ladies that you work with? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's exactly that. Because if you, if you have the identity that, that I'm broken, that I'll never find love again, that this is not going to be possible for me, or that I guess I'm just going to have to live with having these ruminating thoughts. Because a lot of the women I work with, um, happen to be post-divorce and they happen to be pretty brilliant, amazing, successful women who by all senses of the, the term, they, they've got it together in the work life. I think where the the, the trouble comes is, is the relationship part because yeah. we're so used to, and you tell me this too, Linda, if, if you if you feel the same way. I think that as a woman, when you, you're so used to acting and behaving in a certain way that 
you, and especially from my side, especially from someone that's being divorced, we have to sort of enter into our masculine energy because it's up to us to keep the house going. It's up to us to make sure that the dog is let out, that the kids are fed, that the kids are going to school. It's up to us to make sure that we're at work doing what we need to do and the paycheck's coming in and we're managing everything. So yeah. it's very, you sort of get into this masculine energy role where you, you because you have to, it's, it's not because you chose to, it's but because you have to. So now this identity comes in that I've got to do it all, that I I have to handle all the burdens, that I'm responsible for everybody's happiness, that if I do anything for myself, then I'm taking away from someone else. And we have this identity that the, the worthiness factor starts coming up that maybe I'm not so worthy or maybe this is impossible. Because if you're looking at, again, from that broken mindset versus I'm already, I'm already healed. Because what I believe is no one's ever broken. No one is ever truly broken because it's my core belief is deep down inside. We're always healed. We're always together. It's just life. Yeah. that comes on and if the identity is you can't do it you won't exactly yep. versus the identity is i can do it and i may not know how to do it i may not know where to start i may not have the tools i don't even know where to begin but i know i can do it and i will yeah hey tina tina said hello to us hi so glad you're joining us hi christine um yeah and to speak to that it's also you can have well, let me back up. When we when we have an identity or a self culture, it's developed by the thoughts that we think, and then the behaviors that we choose that will reinforce those thoughts. Right. So, if you think I'm going to speak to people with health issues, if you think you're um, unhealthy, right, you have this diagnosis and you feel unwell, then you start to behave in certain ways, like you don't participate in activities because you're worried you're going to get tired. Um, yes. You don't, you know, stay up too late. And the thinking behind that is um, a lower energy level thinking of scarcity, of fear. You could do the same behaviors. You yes. could say, let me get myself to bed on time from not a place of fear because I'm sick, but from a place of empowerment. I know what my body needs. Therefore, I'm going to do the behaviors that give it the best tools. And I'm going to be well because of that. So same action, totally different thought patterns behind it. Yeah. Very different energy level it gets created. And then who you are in the world is very different. Did, did yeah. that make sense? Makes total sense. And I think that so much of our thinking, believe it or not, is outdated of someone else's belief systems about us that may not even apply to us anymore. They may be belief systems that our mother gave us when we were five years old mm -hmm. that says you can't do something or you're not smart enough to do that. And here we are in our 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, and that thinking is still playing true today. Yeah. Right? I think for an example, like siblings even get like this yeah. sibling was good at this, this one was good at that, and yeah. you heard that from the elders in the family, and so you live into that. That's absolutely the and until you don't, until you know better, right? Because I think, like again, like that's I have the story that I like to say, and, and it's it's a very short little story, and, and you probably heard it before, but I'll just I think it bears repeating. Okay. It is a young woman and her mom are cooking dinner, right? And they're making a pot roast. So they make the pot roast, they put all the ingredients in there and they take out the pan and before they put the pot roast in the pan mom cuts off a piece of the pot roast throws it away and puts the pot roast in the pan right and, and the daughter's like what like why are you cutting a piece of pot roast before you and she's like you know what i don't even know let's ask grandma because grandma's alive she knows so they call grandma and grandma says you know what i have no idea why so that let's call nana right because nana's there so we're going to ask nana and nana's answer was because we didn't have a pot big enough or a pan big enough. Oh my goodness. So generation after generation after generation, no one thought to question these things. They right. just did as they were told. They just did as the generations have taught us to do. Yeah. And some of that is, is, is how we show up in the world with our identity and our values and our, and, and our beliefs of the world, which have served us so well. But yeah. some of those now are also outdated. They're not meant for us anymore. And, and they really need to be sort of addressed and cleaned out because 
5% of our thinking is conscious. 95% of our thinking is subconscious. So if all of these belief systems are subconscious, which means that when you're about to do something and you don't do it because of fear, it's not because you don't have the tools to do it, but somewhere in your subconscious, it's telling your brain, you can't do this. You yeah. don't have enough this. You're not smart enough. You're not tall enough. You're not this. You're not that. And before you know it, we end up not doing things, not because we don't want to, or we don't have the tools, but it's that subconscious thinking yeah. that has created an identity that is not even ours anymore. Yeah. So that's the work that I love to do with the women that I work with is I'm not saying let's throw the baby out with the bathwater and throw out all of your every identity, but let's, let's, let's take a look at what works for you. Cause a big piece of that may not be valid for you anymore. You know, yeah. just because Aunt Susie said, this is what we do. This is our family and we're farmers and this is all we do. We only could be farmers. Well, do you want to be a farmer? And if you want to be a farmer, great. But if you don't, maybe it's time to change that identity and how you show up in the world. Yeah. 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 I love that. And, and the way it um, relates, and I'd love to hear how you, oh, Bonnie, Bonnie heard that. I had not heard that story. I mean, I saw where it was going, but I had not heard that before. But when you, um, when you have that identity, I, I'd love to hear how you work on that with your clients. But um, some of the things that I talk about is first identifying the identities that we have. So, mm -hmm. so like for my ladies, they're moms. So what is your identity as a mom? Well, that's for some people, it's uh, I make sure I take care of everything. I make sure my children are whatever you know, very well nurtured and taken care of. For another woman, it might be, I make sure my children are self-sufficient. I have them from as young as they can be doing everything, right? Very different mm -hmm. philosophies, whatever, but that's a different identity as a mom, neither right or wrong. So, so let's talk about that because I'm not saying it's not or it isn't, but this is an interesting conversation. So would you consider that to be an identity or a value? Because could it, so the way that I see identity is if I'm showing up as a good mom or a bad mom. Now the values of how I raise my children, or maybe it, or or is it? Because I think this is where a lot of people get confused. Of really, well, I think there's that. some growth. There's definitely I'm going to create my identity around the things that I value. So as you create, so as as you are having your children do the things that you value, right? So let's say you have them just for all intents and purposes that you're the mom that wants to have them do their chores and wants to have them, you know, kind of be self-sufficient and all of those things. So those, though, that is what you value, but you base your identity around that. If they're, if the children are following that and doing that, because now you're, you're no, feeling fulfilled. No, what I was, what I was meaning, I just chose that as to show different behaviors, but we, yeah. all, so let me give a couple more examples and maybe it'll be yeah. Yeah. Um, an identity of, of a Christian woman or any religion yeah, doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah. Make sure I go to church. I use prayer when I'm upset or I pray daily as a daily. Yes. Yes. An identity as a grandmother is I'm the one who gets to spoil. You know, so we create whatever our values are, but we create a, an identity. I get it. I get what you're saying. Right. And so and that's how so so as so let me make sure I, I'm hearing you. So let's say as a Christian woman, just again, like let's just say, for example, because like you said, it could be anything. It doesn't even have to be religion, it could be spirituality, universe, just whatever you whatever you, aligns with you. But yeah. in this case, let's say I'm a Christian woman. So let's say for whatever reason, my health right? Because you work with health is so poor that I can't make it to church. Now, my identity is a good Christian woman goes to church. Yes. So now my identity is being fractured and I'm maybe some guilt and shame and condemnations coming through because I'm not able to be congruent with how I'm identifying with the world. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Well, that's one piece of it. Okay. And what I was <clears throat> going to say the next layer is then when I work with my clients, I get them to look at the behaviors and values that they have put in place based on their identity of I'm sick. So their behaviors, they're, you know, um, valuing a nap every day, making sure they don't. Yeah, this is fascinating, Linda. I'm loving this conversation. Oh my God. I'm like all fired up about this. Cause oh, good. Okay. <laughs> so, but then, but then, so if I was healthy, what would that woman be doing? So, so we can start yeah. to shift. You can make a list of, oh, well, the identity that I have right now is I'm 
a 50 year old woman who's divorced, who, you know, has fatigue and energy, like that's the identity of who I am right now. And so what are the things that I do that support that? And then if I wanted to change that and be a 50 year old woman, who's a rock star in her life, who's got tons of energy, what would that woman be, that doing? Woman be doing? Yeah. And that starts to build a new identity. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, it's 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 honestly, it is so true because that that builds the identity, and, and isn't it? It's it's. I don't know what the word I'm looking for, but it's almost as stealth mode where these these thoughts, behaviors, and belief systems are are are. We don't even realize how much they're playing in our everyday life, but they are really affecting how we live. Because yeah. like you said, if you're if you're identifying with someone who's sick or who doesn't feel well, well then it's a nice sunny day outside. But you're sick and you don't feel well, you, you're going to be inside. Right. It doesn't matter. You're not you're not going to want to do that. However, if you're identifying with someone who has vibrancy, who has energy, who's going to take this world by the horns, a sunny day outside is an opportunity because that's what the identity of that 50 year old woman who believes that will will take on yeah exactly. yeah and i think it's the similar thing on my end too with the women that i work with and my you know the, the women who um who are either in divorce post-divorce or wherever they are is the identity of the the soul fracture of what had happened to me versus the identity of there's an opportunity that maybe maybe there's a miracle in, in this mess maybe just maybe that i could take i could take a look at my past and glean the information that really helps me and serves me take that get rid of everything else and and i'm i'm a magnificent woman and i'm ready to create my future not because my aunt or my mother or my sister is giving me this identity but i actually maybe for the first time in my life get to create my own identity yeah i've had someone in my group and i'm sorry i, I hate to i i will because i definitely I to just cut you off but i remember i had one person in my group and she was in her 70s and i will never forget this conversation that i had with her she says donna i i feel like i felt i finally feel like a woman my own woman for the first time in my entire life yeah because yeah. it's that authenticity it's that embodiment of the identity that matches you. It's finally like going to the store and trying on a, a, a that, that that clothing that was almost made for you, tailored for you. It fits every everything. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of like the first child identity. If you're the oldest in four kids, yeah. there's that identity. There's the youngest child identity. I'm the Middle child, child. <laughs> everywhere in between. Everywhere. There's an, an identity around money, right? Like automatically people who you know, wants something or want to do something or have something or be something, then, okay, money is just something that comes to me and goes back out because it's it's what I, you know, use to do the things. For other people, their identity around money is very, is a lot of scarcity, right? Like, yeah. oh, no, I can't do that unless I have a whole bunch of reasons that's, that would really justify why I would do that. And no, no, I'm not supposed to spend money on myself, right? So you can look at every single facet of yeah. it. and it's also a lever of their happiness too right is is that is that how they're if they have money in their bank account they're happy and if they don't they're not that too yeah yep right so and it's, it is also and to me those are all indicators so i like to look at things not as right or wrong bad or good i like to look at things more or less as does it serve me or does it hurt me yeah and and understanding, I think when, when you finally step into the identity that you're creating on your own, you get to you get to create what the what's important and it's from the inside, not from the outside. So the outside circumstances are no longer going to be telling you you're gonna have a good day or a bad day. It's just because you've made the decision. Do you feel that way too with the women that you work with that you, you make the decision? It's not to say there's not a, a road ahead to healing because there may be a diet change, right? I'm guessing there may be supplements, there may be exercise, there may be a whole sort of a difference, but it's the decision that you're a healthy woman. Yeah, we, we use this when I get on my coaching calls with my clients. It's oh, that's Casey. Let me let her out. Hold on. Sure. Hold on one second. She wanted in, now she wants out. Isn't that the way? That's her identity. <laughs> I swear, she's. I, I love her. She's like my baby, but she's my VP of operations, who everyone who doesn't know, I call her. But <laughs> the dog is she? What is she? She's a mix of German short hair pointer, border collie, oh. and a lab. Okay, okay. 
so and even each of those breeds, right? We have a thought about what each breed is like, and that's what just what came into my mind. I'm just you know, just notice it everywhere. But yeah, in terms of like for my clients, when when I'm on coaching calls with them as they move through, like my bigger program has regular coaching calls. Um, that comes up a lot because there are a lot of changes. If you are fatigued and um, you have digestive issues and you have headaches all the time, there's stuff we need to work on, right? That doesn't just happen. That's not the way God made mm -hmm. our bodies. That's mm -hmm. not how the rest of the world moves through their day, right? So there's something that we really need to change. You can't keep doing. Yeah. What happens yeah. is, especially with women and dieting, because we don't go on a diet in my program. We need, we need to look at how food is serving you or not serving you. It's the same thing, but yeah, yeah. They have a history of dieting. So they have a history in their mind of when they were successful, probably since high school, mm -hmm. doing a diet, failing at a diet, you know, trying this other diet, I've dieted all my life, all of that. And so we have to really work through that because the second they get off track, oh, this is me, I, I never stick with stuff. Just want you to know I typically fail. You know, they already have it in their head. So we have to create a new identity around food and who they are and who they're able to be for their mm -hmm. health. And you know what, Linda, that, that identity is going to affect that person in every area of her life. So whether it be in, in healthy eating, if, if she, if her identity is this never, things never work for me, I always get the short end of the stick. It doesn't matter. I've tried everything. Then it's, of course, it's not going to work. And then let's say at work, she's up for a promotion or an opportunity. And no, you know what? Things just don't work out for me. I never, I never get it. Well, guess what? That promotion won't happen. And let's just say she happens to be divorced and she happens to be wanting to attract the love of her life. But her belief system is things just don't happen for me. You know, all the good ones are gone. And guess what? In her, for her particular world, they are. Yeah. Because she, she's just not going to see them. Because I think, too... And tell me if you feel this too. And I'm, I'm just even my, using my own experiences, let alone my clients. But if I have a certain belief about something, then I don't see other options. I only see the option that I believe. Absolutely. I mean, our beliefs are the, the glasses that we look through the world at. Earth. Yeah, look at the world through. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that. <laughs> Um, but, you know, those are your beliefs. So you're wearing them and you're looking at everything that's happening through your belief system. And you really live and interpret everything as if it's the truth, as, as if it's absolutely so, because your belief tells you that. But beliefs are only an accumulation of thoughts that you've been thinking over time that, like you said, maybe your mom told you when you were a kid and you just started believing it. And so... It's so powerful, I think, when you realize, holy cow, I don't have to believe that. I don't have to look at the world that way anymore. What else could I believe? And then you can I love that. another identity. I love that because the have tos. How many times? How many times do we say we have to, we oh. should, right? And I say, don't should on me because <laughs> should, right? Are, are automatically, even the moment we say it, we're all, are automatically saying that we're wrong or we're in a different place. But the have tos, the shoulds, where, I love this conversation because I feel like a sense of freedom in a spirit, in our soul as a woman, because we've taken on so much of other people's, excuse my language, shit over, over our lifetimes that we could keep going down the hamster wheel of life that way. And, and if someone is not wanting to be awakened or change or have a different perspective, then all the power to her, right? That's that's totally fine. There's no judgment here. But I think you and I tend to be in the mindset of if we could know better, then let's do better. If there's another way and we can learn something differently and we have the opportunity to just question it. Doesn't mean we have to disregard it. Doesn't mean we're being disrespectful to it. But just to sit back and say, does that thought work for me anymore? You know, like, does that, does that really serve me? And then when you begin going down that conversation, I think it's almost like a little bit of a rabbit hole because you realize how many things that you may have that you thought were true that may not necessarily be true. They're feeling, they're not fact. Can I share a personal story with you? Absolutely. I would love you to. Yeah. So, um, so my background um, and people in my tribe have heard this story, but 
I was a, have always been a wellness professional, but I was a yeah. personal trainer. So masters in exercise physiology. And in my twenties, I participated in some triathlons. I did a marathon. I was on an aerobics competition team. We traveled. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like one of those oh, cool. with on, like Richard Simmons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So that, was, that was me. Um, and so I had my identity around a fitness person and what that looked like, what I should look like. And, you know, it better be a flat stomach and it better be. Oh, yeah. Super fit. And then I got sick and I had, you know, my first autoimmune condition and then the next one. And I couldn't be that fitness professional anymore. And I spent many years in this tug of war between the only way that I knew to be a fitness professional was to be hyperly fit, doing everything, tons of energy, up at five, doing a run. Yeah. I didn't know how else to do it. And to be honest, this profession now, I went back to school and shifted. So I'm still in wellness. I still help people live their best life. But I had to realize that it didn't only have to look that one way. It was it was a several year trend yeah. for me. And and Linda, let's let's talk about that because I think at least some of the people who may be listening from my viewers or, or later on, um, they don't know exactly how to do that, right? Like how how do how how do we okay, so this is a great conversation, but now what do I do? And I I can only speak from my journey. And that my journey was working with my first coach, right? And then evol over the years, I evolutionized into, you know, it, it just seemed to be for me, I say God, I believe in God, but I just believe God put the right person in my path to help me where I was at that moment, right? That particular coach who specialized in a particular area. And I learned what I needed to learn from that coach. And just when I was ready, the next coach would appear and I would work with that coach. But I look back at my journey and I tried to do it on my own for so long and yeah. I and, and what what I also found too is that especially in the divorce area or the uh, relationship area, you, you're always going to find people, and probably the same thing what, what you do is the negative Nellies, right? The, the negative Nellies, and all they want to do is complain, and they get very they're very tied into that identity of how life sucks. Yes, and this is just going to be it, right? Like the up and downs, and this is just going to, and they and they can't wait, and and in the divorce circle, they can't wait to talk about how bad their ex husband was, and how yeah. it, and I was like, oh my gosh, like this is, I can't be around that because that is just a that's just sludge. It's it just brings me down. So for me, it was critical to get into a, a community in an area where there was another way of thinking, where I could learn what I didn't know because we don't know what we don't know. I didn't even know there was another way. Yeah. And you can't, and, and again, I'm, I'm all for free. Don't get me wrong. I love free resources. I have tons of free books. I listen to the podcast. I recommend it. I'm all about free. But when you really need to do the work and let me know if you feel the same way, you have to invest in yourself and find the right person where you are at that moment to help you over that bridge and to teach you what you didn't know or what you don't know. What do you, what do you say about that? I absolutely say that you have to be ready because if you find the right person and they're not ready and they're there ready to help you, you know, that how many times did I make that mistake? I, I, I have to be honest. I would sit there and pray and I would say, okay, universe, God, I need help with X, Y, and Z. Please send me someone who could help me with X, Y, and Z. That person, of course, would show up. And then I would have the opportunity to speak with them. And then next thing I would know would be like, I can't spend that. Oh my gosh, like that's so much money. And, and my, because I didn't have my identity mindset of my worth and my value. And I was looking at every part of my lack. Yeah. So I didn't have the tools. I was, yeah. But what ended up happening was I was giving the universe chaotic energy. I was saying, I want something. No, I don't. I want something. No, I don't. I want, and I started getting in that cycle of this push and the pull, the push and the pull until one day I just had enough trust and, and, and I had where I was ready because there was not another day I was going to live my life this way. I just knew. And from that moment I, I could go back and I could kiss and hug my coat, my first coach over and over again. Cause it literally shifted the entire trajectory of my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I knew how that sentence was going to end. Yeah, right. yeah, I think you have to be ready because I don't know again about you, but I speak to many people where in my mind I'm going, oh my gosh, I totally know what what I could help with this person. I totally know how I could make a difference, but she doesn't see that or she's 
you know, got her fear. So she's not ready. So, you know, that's, that's where it is. But when you're ready and the right person shows up, um, I think that that can be magical and just, as you said, change the trajectory of your life. So, yeah. okay. So I'm going to ask you to, and, and you don't have to share, we don't have to share exactly who you're working with and things like that. But to me, I'm always the one that I want to know what my coaches do. Like I want to know behind the scenes. It's great. So Donna, yeah, you tell me I need a coach, but I want to know what you do. Like, what do you do? What you're, I want to see, are you talking the talk, walking the walk? So how did you get to where you are? And I could share what I do on a daily basis of, and, and my work that I've done over the years, but I'd be really curious, like what, what do you do to keep your mindset sharp? What are the most important things in your life that you just say, I will never not do without. And here's my daily mindset routine. Do you mind sharing that with us? Cause I'd be real. No, 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 yeah, sure. So 30 years ago, it used to be, I will never not go without a run every day. Right. That was that yep. very maniacal mm -hmm. fitness person. Yep. So I had those types of things, you know, I made sure I, you know, I could need to be in the airport at 6 a.m. and I would go for a run at four. Yeah. Now at 4.30, I get up and meditate. So what I have found, and my ladies who actually work with me are probably chuckling if there's yeah. <laughs> that's part of the work we do together. And I'll be like, are you doing your meditations? Are you? And, you know, yeah. people don't necessarily see the value in that immediately. Right. It takes for me when I get away from that, if I let it drop out my day is different. I agree. And I see the difference. So that's why I do it. Do I want to get up at 430? No, but I see the difference. So and it doesn't have to be 430. It's not like there's some magical number for me in my life, when I start my day and what I want to accomplish 430 or five, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I get up and I meditate. And that actually reminds me. So I love what you said before that 95% um, of our thoughts are subconscious. Yes. They're also the same exact thoughts we thought yesterday. Exactly. Yeah. The same thoughts. Yeah. So I don't want to wake up into that same hamster wheel of thinking. Oh, the, these bills have to be paid. That's what most people do. The first thing, I kid you not, right? Before they even get up out of bed, the phone's on, Instagram, Facebook. They're, they're, yeah. and again, it's not that it's bad. But it, it doesn't serve us if we're looking to create this level of life, right? So I like what you said about, like, you don't you don't want to think those same thoughts as yesterday. I know. I want to I want to create my day. I want to create yeah. my day newly. Consciously newly create. Life. Yeah. Consciously create it. By, so then after I meditate, um, then I spend some time writing. And, I, and I'll write what I want to accomplish that day, what my goals are for that day. It may be around my business. It may be around my house. It may be personally, but what are my goals? And yeah. will I necessarily do all of them? Maybe, maybe not, but I don't make myself wrong. So that's my intention. Yeah. And then we'll see. And if something didn't get done, it'll get on the next morning's list again. You know, not good or bad. I'm, it's, I'm moving through my life as best as I can. Right. So, um, so that's what I do in terms of like every day I make sure that I do. What's so funny is the fitness person that I am, I forget to exercise sometimes. Because <laughs> the mindset has become more important. Yeah. Because it really is based on that. Everything is based on our identity and our mindset. Our, our whole life is going to be created based on that. So in the past, we used to value the run, but now you value the mind. It's, a, it's, it's, it's an interesting shift. Yeah. Yeah. Now I know also know that you're an avid person who believes in coaching because you're you're being coached. You also hire your own coaches to yeah. work with you, as do I. And I my my routine seems to be very similar. I wake up at 4:45 every morning, not necessarily to get up out of bed, but my conscious intention is to wake up at that time because that's where the veil is the thinnest between the divine and the conscious world, and that's the time where I could go into my meditation and get into that mystical experience because I know that my neural pathways have been programmed and conditioned over the, my years of life, and I if I'm consciously creating my life, then that's my opportunity to reprogram those neural pathways. Yeah. And you absolutely. can't reprogram them by hustling. You, can, you can't do it. It's, it. It actually is the reverse. You actually have to do it by going fully relaxed. Yes. And letting go. And letting go. We obviously are both Joe Dispenza big fans. Oh, Joe Dispenza for sure. And anyone who's listening to this, Joe Dispenza is the bomb. Amazing. Yeah. And I do use his work. Matter of fact, I don't know if you just got it. He came out with the pineal gland meditation recently. Did you, did you see that? Hour and a half meditation. I yeah. do it every day, 
almost every day. Is that the first thing in the morning or do you do you try to meditate again in the middle of the I med- day? I med- meditate later on in the day. So my, my morning meditation will typically be something of like um, uh, balancing of the energy centers or reconditioning the mind, mm-hmm. new possibilities, something like that. Mm-hmm. And then um, I also have worked with a private person who has created personal ones for me just oh, based cool. on my vision and my goals and where I want to go. So I'll, 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 it depends on where I am on the day. So I'll interplay those. Cool. And then, um, then later on in the day, I'll do the other one. Wow. Yeah. It's a commitment, you know, but it, it, it allows us, me, you to, um, defend, so I don't know if you can, can you see Bonnie's? So Bonnie's yeah. So it's Joe Dispenza and I'm going to write it right here. So it's Dr. Joe Dispenza, Bonnie. And Bonnie's one of my peeps. So I'll Bonnie, we can definitely chat. I, I do there it is. Stuff all the time. Oh, look at you. Yeah. Dr. Joe Dispenza. So wait, we actually do have a question from Bonnie. Um, and Bonnie asks, can something serve you and rob you at the same time? I believe so. I do too. Yeah. And and what I mean by that is um well let's just say the 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 trait of persevering no matter what. That's a great trait that can serve you when, you know, there's circumstances. So for me, I, uh, my daughter was in the hospital a lot. So that, that character trait of, I got this, I'm going to knuckle down, got me through. It also had me get into a pattern of knuckling down. Yeah. Asking for help, you know, maybe when I needed it. Uh, don't get me wrong. I had tons and tons of help, but not always because I asked. It's just people were n- nice enough to realize. So that's an extreme example, but no, I think that's that's a that's a perfect example. Is okay. that something that 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 society sees as good? Because that's what society will say. You got to hustle. You got to go. You got to work. You have got to move. And 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 again, all of these 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 sayings that we that we say. You know that there's no guys out there there's there's or you know if you're you know getting just go to the regular doctor and you just have to live with this there's no other way around it right like so all of these things so now when we we sort of think about that perseverance example it's it's, it's exactly it i love that example excellent and bonnie said excellent example okay thanks bonnie that's because bonnie loves me yeah <laughs> that's good i can't i that's there's you give her many reasons to love her i'm sure that she loves you. All right, Linda. So I don't know about you, but I think I think we've kind of nailed this conversation. What do you th- What do you think? And what I think is that it kind of leads into it's kind of the um, cracking of the can or whatever you know, just yeah. into it yeah. because um, it leads into maybe a conversation about if you're working on your identity for yourself. How does that impact the people around you, the family that you live in, the job that you live in, your culture? Because you you aptly named this creating a self culture, right? Yes. Yeah. So how do you um, now take your self culture, which may have been as a as a woman pre divorce, putting everybody else first, and now you're changing who you are, and now how do you go and change your external groups and and people around you in that culture. And I think it's it's kind of on that timeline where number one, it's just becoming aware that life just doesn't have to be lived the way it, it's, listen, if your life is living fine and everything's going great, then that's great. Don't change anything. But if, if there's, if there's something in your heart, if you have a, if you're not where you want to be, then it's coming to that, that, that permission to say, okay, I'm here now not exactly where I want to be, not sure how I'm going to get to where I want to be, but just the awareness point, right? That's number one, I think, on the timeline. Number two is the decision to do something, to take action. Because I like to say that there's two sayings I say, that good decisions come from a hell yes or a hell no, not a maybe so. Oh, I like that. Right? Because if you're, if you're doing, if you're a maybe so, what is a maybe so? It's the middle of the road. You're going to get run over. I'd rather you say hell yes and go for it and figure out, well, maybe this wasn't quite what I wanted, but then you figure out how to refine it and make it work for you or a hell no. And you realize either, wow, maybe I could have done this. So now next time when the opportunity comes, I'm going to make that chance to say yes. Or if you say no and it just 
you know, it, it's, it was a good decision, then you could say, great, I did it, right? But either way, you're, you're, you, you have conviction. And I think that that's where that the conviction comes in. And just like sitting on a fence, only thing that sitting on a fence is going to give you is splinters. That's it. I'll be stealing both of them. <laughs> like that's all it's going to give you is splinter. So when you say hell yes or hell no, so on the timeline, number one is just the awareness that maybe, maybe there's some things I could, I could reevaluate. And Bonnie said, maybe is a way of talking yourself out of something. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Number two is that decision, that commitment that I'm, that I'm, I'm doing something. And then number three is reaching out or finding the people to support you on your journey. The people who have, are where you want to be or are aligned and have the, the skills and the mentorship to take you where you need to be because we can't do this journey alone. It takes a village as women. I mean, I don't know if you feel this, but man, I feel, I mean, and every level of my life where I, every summit that I reach, I realized I never would have made it to that summit if I didn't have my coach and my community to help me there. Because yeah. there are days, I don't know if you feel the same way. There are days, like you said, I don't want to wake up at 445. I don't want to do those things. And I know that if I don't have accountability to continue to do that, I'll likely just never do it again. But with the accountability, then I know it keeps me sort of in the pace. Yeah. Yeah. And that's creating, you know, getting that kind of partnership. And then, you know, what I was alluding to is we could have another conversation about creating your culture, like the people that you hang out with. Yeah. So let's do that next time. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the, the people that we hang out next time. So for everyone who's listening to this now, Linda and I are going to be coming back. We're going to be back and forth from her page to my page on Facebook lives, but really for the next However long, we haven't put an end date on it, but every other week we are going to be having these conversations. So we may have to think of like a really good show name. I don't know. What do you think, Linda? We have to, <laughs> we have to think of a name for these conversations. Yeah, so fun. But it's just, it's really fun, Donna, to just yeah. go through some of these. Um, we work in very different spaces, but there is definitely some overlap. And um, I'm really thrilled when you share your wisdom. With Thank my, you. Yeah. Now, Linda, can you on your site, can you add in your website or only I have access to that? Can you post a comment? Let me see. Uh, yeah, it looks like I can. All right. Um, so why don't you post a comment where people could find you if they have any questions on their health journey? And I'm just going to say my business page on um, Facebook is organic. Cindy, Cindy is saying great. Bonnie Hughes is saying double the pleasure, double the fun. Yes. Bonnie. Bonnie's like, she's just a powerhouse of encouragement and enthusiasm. That's what I love. about. Okay. Her. So I am going to just copy this because that went through a private chat, not the comments. Oh, sorry. So put it right here. And it says chat with the host and other guests. Which no worries. No okay. worries. I'm going to put it on there. And so you're found at Organic Health Journey. Is that your page? Is That's that my you? business page? I have a private okay. Facebook group, which is fatigue, thyroid, and autoimmune recovery. We can do that one next week or whatever. But that is my business page. Yeah. And if anybody has any questions, I will be monitoring this, you know, over the next couple of days. So if you have any questions, just post in the comments and either Linda and I will be more than happy to kind of get back with you. And we appreciate you guys for sharing and being here on this conversation. Cause I don't know about you, but this was awesome. It was fun. It was, it was awesome. Fun. It was fun too. And such good stuff and stuff that we're not thinking about unless there's an invitation to think about it. So I do hope that this has shifted your viewpoint towards life or that there was a little seed in there for you to, for our listeners, right, to to come out with something new. And for those of you who don't know me, if you want to go to my website, um, this is where you could find me. And it's very simple. I only have one N, but it's DonnaRudowitz.com, D O N A R U. T O W I C Z dot com. So with that said, Tina, is this let's see here, Tina. Tina says thank you. Thanks, Tina, for listening. Thank you for listening, Tina. You're welcome. We're so happy that you were here with us. All right, Chickalina. Okay. I'll see you in two weeks. I'll see you in two weeks. Bye guys. See you later. Yep. Bye.